Hey, thanks for coming. It's great to do this. It's so important. The title of this talk uh, comes originally from Abraham Lincoln in the Gettysburg Address. Uh, you probably recognize the context if you're an American. Uh, we've been using it lately at Code for America, and I'm going to come to that. But I want to start by saying it also so important in the work that we do here. All the talks are about people and how they fit in technology. And I started thinking about this again recently uh, because uh, this quote came to mind from a number of sources. Uh, it was during the Q&A of a talk I gave in 2008 at Fidelity Investments. And somebody said, we know about all these new technologies. What we don't know is how to organize ourselves to use them effectively. And you think about the introduction of any new technology. It really pushes human organization. And so, of course, you, know, you think about the history of the assembly line, but more recently, open source software, you know, wikis, uh, the web itself, you know, organizations of, or networks like uh, Airbnb or Uber, or even the Apple, uh, the Apple uh, store where they're using the power of smartphones to totally rethink the workflow of the store. You know, getting rid of the cash register, getting people interacting with you much more directly. Technology plus people used in a new way. So all these things are new ways of organizing people. But when that Fidelity executive raised the question, I think he was probably thinking more of the world you live in, uh, you know, of of DevOps. You look at all these uh, ebooks from O'Reilly and you know, you look at the titles, you know, building a DevOps culture, anti-fragile systems and teams. You know, the human side of postmortems, learning from first responders. These are all about the human side of this practice that you're all engaged in. I started thinking about this uh, back in 1998 when I wrote a paper called The Importance of Perl. I was thinking about why are uh, these so-called scripting languages so important on the web? And I realized that it was because they were used to build up and tear down software all the time. That led me down a path where I thought of von Kempelen's Mechanical Turk, uh, the 18th century hoax that purported to be a, a, you know, a robot chess player but actually had a human hidden inside. And I thought, what a great metaphor for web apps. This is the big change of what became known as software as a service, cloud computing, and all that. There are humans still inside the application. You know, software used to be an artifact that you built, you shipped, and you were done. And now it's a continuing process, a workflow. And DevOps, in some sense, is the science of how, uh, uh, the management science of that workflow. And this all came to mind again because of the healthcare.gov rescue. Now, you guys heard from Mikey Dickerson yesterday. There he is, third from the right on the cover of Time. And what was so striking and what brought back that quote to mind was, uh, you know, this notion that these, these tech wizards had come in. But when I actually heard Mikey tell his story, as you did yesterday, it was so clear that what he was actually doing was debugging the communication failures of the organization as much as he was looking at what was wrong with the software. And, you know, so you heard him talk about how he did, you know, stand-up meetings uh, for 17 hours. You know, he was working 17-hour days, with lots and lots of meetings. <laughs> basically focused on why people weren't able to keep the promises they made to each other. And of course, it was like a textbook, you know, story uh, out of the Phoenix Project. I don't know if you've ever read that book, but it's a great way if you want to get non-technical managers to understand uh, what you do. Healthcare.gov, man, every, every government person who was involved in that should be forced to read this book. But it was also great account of promise theory. I love Mark Burgess's line. He says, promise theory doesn't naively assume that all promises will be kept. Humans break their promises all the time. Machines, which can also be agents in a network of promises, just break. But with promise theory, agents are aware of the commitments they're making and their promises are more likely to reflect, reflect what they're capable of performing. And he says, we know the estimates were made with accurate information by the agent responsible, not by external wishful thinkers without a clue. Now, all of us have lived in a world of external wishful thinkers without a clue. I think that was what Mikey waded into. 
And, you know, what he discovered was that healthcare.gov was designed to deliver by a system that doesn't allow the developers to make promises to each other or to operations engineers. The promises are all made by politicians to other politicians and policymakers and handed down from on high. And so what the healthcare.gov rescue team brought at heart was a cultural revolution, which is just beginning in understanding how we actually have to build these massive, you know, really world-spanning services that we are starting uh, to put together. But there's another quote about DevOps that came to mind, and that's from Jeff Susna's uh, post, Empathy, the, De- uh, the Essence of DevOps, where he said, it's not about making developers and sysadmins reporting the same VP. It's not about automating your configuration procedures or tipping up a Jenkins server or running your applications in the cloud or releasing your code on GitHub. It's not even about letting your developers deploy their code to a platform as a service. The true essence of DevOps is empathy, understanding the other people that you work with and how you're going to work together more effectively. And that word empathy struck me, and it made me connect the world of DevOps with the world of user experience design. And the connection ran, again, through healthcare.gov and the failure, and in particular, this wonderful quote from Ezra Klein in one of the pieces he wrote about this. He said, one privilege the insured and well-off have is to excuse the terrible quality of services the government routinely delivers to the poor. Healthcare.gov just showed what people who are on food stamps, for example, struggle with daily. And that brought me to the work we do at Code for America. Uh, we send small startup teams in to work with cities. Among other things, we also engage civic hackers, any of you can volunteer, to work with cities to build better technology. Anyway, this one team worked with the Human Services Agency in San Francisco to debug the problems that they were having with food stamps. Now, if you want to understand food stamps, there's a great uh, series on uh, Marketplace. And uh, when I heard this, it was eye-opening. A huge proportion of food stamps are spent at midnight, on one day a month. The one day a month when people's, what's called, now called a, a supplemental nutritional assistance program card, SNAP card, are refilled. Right? Who goes shopping at midnight? People who are hungry. So this really matters if you get to the front of the line and suddenly your SNAP card doesn't work. Oh, why didn't it work? Well, it turns out that's the problem that the fellows went to debug. And it turned out, no, until they did this, nobody had actually gone through the process with this eye of user experience design. And they found these letters that were pretty unintelligible, even to them. And they ended up replacing them with a text message that essentially said, this is a problem with your benefits, call the office. You know? And that simple human intervention reduced churn in the system by 40%. But it was just putting themselves in the shoes of the user. And uh, um, Jake Solomon, one of the fellows, wrote a great post on Medium called People, Not Data, on disdain and empathy in civic tech. It starts, user needs. An empathetic service would ground itself in the concrete needs of concrete people. That's so important in what we do. And so that term empathy goes between DevOps and user experience. And you know, it, it, that leads me to kind of the motto or the, the mission statement that Jan Polka put together for Code for America. Government can work for the people, by the people, in the 21st century if we make it so. So she unpacks this, and I'm actually stealing her slides here. She says, for the people could also be read as for people. And, of course, by people. And uh, that's kind of where I want to leave you, because this is also a great message for anybody building services at all in the 21st century because we build 21st century services of people. You think about the Uber driver. They're part of the system. You think about the person who's basically inside the applications like you that are running and the cloud. Uh, You think about crowdsourcing, uh, all these these other elements of 21st century technology where people are part of the system. But then you have to say, we ultimately must be doing this for people. It's so easy to get caught up in this idea that we're going to measure and monitor and we're going to 
potentially even manipulate you know, the, all the ideas of lean startup and growth hacking. And it's super important that we don't just think about, well, this is a way to grow our business, uh, to get better results. It is a way to actually serve our audience, serve our customers. And that's why that word empathy is so much at the heart of what we should all be doing as we bring 21st century technology to work for people. Thank you.